What is your IQ? How do you find out? Can IQ go up? Hello friends. Whenever we hear names like Einstein, Stephen Hawking, Ramanujan, we immediately think what was their IQ? You might have heard people say Einstein's IQ was at 160. But have you ever wondered what your IQ is? Who even measures it and how? And once you know it, your IQ, what do you do with that number? Should you just ignore it? No, don't be dismissive. This is one number that can affect everything from education to jobs and even lifespan. A lot of life decisions. So in today's video, let's break it down. What IQ actually is, how it is measured, how you can test it for yourself and whether you can improve it. Let's go. What is IQ? Friends, as you probably know, IQ stands for Intelligence Quotient. It's a single number meant to indicate your intellectual ability. Usually, it sits between about 70 and 130. Important point, IQ doesn't equal how much knowledge you have. Knowledge is different from intelligence. Think of IQ more like how fast and well your brain can take some information. And after taking it, how it processes and produces an answer. Some people are language experts, others are great at math, but some people seem to pick up anything and perform well. That underlying ability, the general cognitive horsepower, is what IQ tests try to measure. A quick history. Back in the early 1900s, roughly between 1900 and 1912, a French psychologist named Alfred Binet created the first IQ test. France had a problem. Many kids were failing in school and the government wanted to find those kids and give them special help. So Binet, along with Theodora Simon, built a set of tasks to spot children who needed extra support. How did they calculate IQ back then? Early Binet Simon style tests gave children a bunch of tasks. Name objects in a picture, explain a short word, repeat a sentence, etc. From that, you could estimate a child's mental age. Basically, the age level the child performed at. If an 8-year-old score like a typical 10-year-old, their mental age would be 10. Then they divided mental age by physical, actual age and multiplied by 100. That gave the IQ number. So, mental age divided by physical age into 100 is equal to IQ. How modern IQ tests work? Now, IQ tests are different. Modern tests measure multiple dimensions, memory, verbal skills, spatial reasoning and numerical skills as well, usually across 7 to 8 sections. You will see vocabulary questions, pattern recognition problems, number sequence puzzles, spatial picture sequences and more. Tests range from 25 to 50 items and often give you only 10 to 30 seconds per question to think. At the end, your raw score is converted to the standard IQ scale. Typical scores and what they mean. More people score between 85 and 115. About 68% of us fall in that range. Only about 2% of people score above 130 or below 70. And scores above 130 are often classed as gifted or genius territory. Examples people often quote Stephen Hawking, IQ 160, Albert Einstein, often quoted in the range of 160 to 190, Mary Curie, sometimes quoted as 180 to 200 range, Srinivasan Ramanujan, often quoted around 185. But remember, these historical IQ attributions are often rough estimates not precise lab verified numbers. Brain size and IQ. There has been research attempting to link brain size with IQ. For example, a 2005 study found a correlation. Higher IQs were associated with slightly larger brain volume. But correlation is not casuation. Brain structure, wiring, genetics, environment, it's complicated. Why IQ matters? education and jobs. Friends, IQ does predict academic success to some extent. A big Scottish study tracked around 13,000 kids who took IQ tests at the age of 11. Five years later, when they sat national school exams, 
researchers compared those exam results to the earlier IQ scores and found something very interesting. There were strong similarities. In other words, higher childhood IQ often predicted better school performance later. IQ also predicts how far someone may go in education. Many university entrance tests and competitive exams include mental ability components and employers in technical high complexity roles often favor higher cognitive ability candidates. Some organizations even set hard IQ limits. For example, at one point the United States military would not accept recruits with an IQ below 80. They allowed only about 20% of recruits scoring between 81 and 92 in certain roles. And here is a historical note. During the Vietnam War era, standards were loosened because more soldiers were needed. But the data also showed that recruits with lower IQs failed training at much higher rates and needed a lot more remedial training. A darker history. Misuse of IQ. IQ has a grim past. In the 19th and 20th centuries, the eugenics movement in the West misused IQ ideas to push racist policies, advocating selective breeding and even forced sterilization for people labeled inferior. In the United States, even several states enforced sterilization laws. By one count, about 60,000 people were subjected to such procedures. And the US Supreme Court weighed in on this in 1927. Tragically, such thinking influenced Nazi policies too. So it's essential to treat IQ as a statistical measure, not a moral judgment. And we also must remember how it's been abused in the past. Can IQ be improved? Short answer, yes, but with important caveats. Studying hard will improve your knowledge and many skills. Chess, music lessons, learning to program, picking up a new language, all these improve crystallized intelligence. That's your vocabulary, facts and learned skills. Good sleep, proper nutrition and mental health also help cognitive performance. But when it comes to fluid intelligence, problem solving abilities, pattern recognition, processing speeds, these improvements are harder and often slower to gain. You can train certain aspects with targeted practice, but the gains are usually modest and require sustained efforts of long periods of time. So you can definitely get better at tasks IQ tests measure, especially the knowledge based parts. But changing innate processing speed or raw reasoning is tougher. Some real world stats and consequences. Studies show higher IQ can even predict life expectancy. The long term Scottish study we mentioned showed that those who scored about 15 points above average at the age of 11 had about 27% of higher survival rates decades later. But IQ isn't a magic ticket to wealth. Financial success and becoming rich don't line up neatly with higher IQ. Plenty of very wealthy people have average or below average IQs and many people with high IQs are not wealthy. So here are the final takeaways. IQ is a useful indicator of cognitive ability but it's not only one magic pill or magic number. It helps predict educational outcomes and sustainability for some complex jobs. It has been historically misused. We have to keep that in mind while discussing IQ. Remember the eugenics example. And next you can improve many components measured by IQ tests, especially through study and practice. But some core cognitive traits are harder to shift. So friends, now what do you think on this? What is your IQ if you have ever taken the tests? Or are you planning to take? Please drop your opinion on the comment section below. Thank you so much. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, share and especially please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much. Keep looking for better. Let's meet again. Namaste.